Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm finally, finally starting seeds for my fall garden. August is the perfect time to start planting things for your fall garden, especially if you live near me. I am located near Charlotte, North Carolina, and I'm in zone 7B. Today I'm gonna to show you how I start some of my fall crops from seed using these seed trays, and also how I direct sow some of them in the ground. But first, I just very quickly wanna talk about how you're supposed to figure out when you're supposed to start these fall crops no matter what zone you're in. I do plan on doing a more in-depth video about this, about different growing zones and how you're supposed to figure out when to plant what throughout the year. But for this video, I just wanna focus on the three things that you need to know to figure out when to plant your fall crops. The first piece of information that you need to know, and it's good to know this in general, is your growing zone. To figure out your growing zone is a very simple Google search. You just go into Google and you're gonna type in your city. So for instance, I would type in Charlotte, North Carolina, growing zone, and Google will pop up and tell me that I live in zone 7B. It's very important to type in your specific city that you live in when you do this, because you don't wanna just type in your state, because for instance, North Carolina has three different growing zones in it. States are very large and they have different environment so it's just important to narrow it down to your city. Second piece of information that's important to know is your first frost date. Again very simple Google search you're going to type in your city and you're going to type in first frost date and it's going to pop up and tell you. For instance my average first frost date here is November 8th but honestly for the past few years my first frost date is more like December. Last year I was harvesting peppers in December. I think we got our first frost like I think it was a couple of days before Christmas but the weather is so unpredictable, especially here in North Carolina, that I always use that frost date that the internet gives me as a guideline, especially for planting things because the weather is so unpredictable and honestly, we could end up having some kind of blizzard on November 8th. <laughs> Today, on the day that I'm recording this, I don't know what day, it's gonna get posted, but the day I'm recording this, it's August 9th. So I think that gives me about 88 or so days until my first projected frost date. So even though I feel like I'm planting a little late, I think I still have plenty of time. 88 days is totally fine for these things that I wanna plant. And that brings me to the third and final thing that you need to know to start your fall garden, and that is what you want to plant and how many days from seed to harvest these crops are gonna take to mature because you wanna make sure that these crops are going to mature before your first frost date, even if they're frost tolerant, you just wanna make sure that you're going to get a harvest from these plants. And to figure out how many days a plant needs from seed to harvest, it's very easy to find on your seed packet. Most of the time, every time it's gonna say on the seed packet how many days a certain plant takes. And it's also important to be variety specific. For instance, let's say you have five different varieties of broccoli that you wanna plant. Most likely they're not all going to mature at the same time. It could be that you have some faster growing varieties and some longer growing varieties. Since I only have 88 days until my first frost, I don't wanna plant anything that's gonna take longer than 88 days to harvest. For a lot of you Northern gardeners, I'm so, so sorry, but it's probably a little late for you to be planting these things that I'm planting because some of you have your first frost as early as like September, I think. But stick around because there are some fast growing things that I'm gonna be planting. So you may be able to get in some of these things that I'm gonna show you. And then you gardeners that live in higher growing zones than me, um, you may not even begin this process for a couple more weeks. So you, you guys probably have plenty of time to get these in and even probably a second round of summer vegetables that that I'm too late for. Then if you live exactly where I do, um, we've gotta get this stuff going. Like, snap, snap, it's, it's time. So let's get started. The first thing I did was I moistened up some seed starting mix. I really like this organic seed starting mix by Espoma. I just threw it into a bucket and I mixed it with some water, got it very nice and damp so that I can put it into my seed trays. These seed trays that I'm using are the Epic Six Cell Seed Trays from Epic Gardening. I really, really love these seed trays. They are very aerated. There are lots of holes and there's these slits down the side so that the roots have an opportunity to air prune instead of become root bound. These things are also like pretty indestructible. They definitely feel like they are gonna hold up for a very, 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 very long time. So I put the soil into the trays, making sure not to get them too compact, but also I want them to be pretty full. Thinking I can pretty much fit everything that I want to grow in here. Um, I don't go like too, too crazy with my fall garden just because, I don't know, I'm always kind of tired <laughs> at the end of the summer. I think other gardeners can relate. Like sometimes I think 
gardeners are excited for a little bit of a break just because like the summer has been so crazy. Um, so I don't tend to plant a lot. And also I don't really have that much space to plant. I way over planted my summer garden and there is very much limited space. So this is what I'm working with. I'm gonna try to just keep everything in this one tray and limit myself. I have my little cup right here with a bunch of recycled plant tags that I'm gonna just rewrite on. And let's get to planting some things. First, I'm gonna start out with some broccoli and cauliflower. I have a lot of different varieties here that I want to plant. I'll put these here and we're gonna start off first with this burgundy broccoli. Does this not? look so beautiful. Purple broccoli, that's crazy. This variety takes between 68 and 75 days, perfect. Broccoli seeds are very small, so I'm not going to plant them very deep. About an eighth of an inch is all that they need. So I just like to take my pencil and I'll use the eraser end of it and um, just make like a little, a little divot. I've got 10 seeds in here and I wanna plant a couple of these plants. So I'm going to put two seeds per cell and I'm gonna plant, I think, maybe three of them. I'm dropping two seeds in here. I'm gonna lightly cover. Remember, the tinier the seeds, the less they need to go into the soil. Got those planted, super excited about purple broccoli. Pro tip, if you use a pencil to write on your plant tags, it will never rub off. I don't know what it is about pencil. Um, but it is like the most permanent on plant tags. I, one year I used Sharpie, all of it rubbed off um, within like a month, but pencil, it stays on all season. Okay, there we go. I have three other broccoli varieties that I'm gonna plant. The first one being this Di Sissio. This is an Italian heirloom and it takes only 48 days. So that's really fast growing. Also gonna be growing this Rapini broccoli. This one, again, takes 45 days, so super fast. Rapini broccoli grows so fast because it doesn't put out a main head of broccoli. It, it's pretty much like little side shoots of broccoli, which honestly, they're, they're more delicious to me. I'd rather have a bunch of little side shoots than a big head of broccoli, and they're much easier to clean. And then this is a new broccoli I've never heard of before. It's a Chinese broccoli called Yod Fa. And this one is gonna be 55 days. On the back, it says this one is like a cross between asparagus and broccoli, only sweeter. Very interesting, can't wait to try that. Next, I'm planting cauliflower. I have two varieties here that I wanna grow. The first one is Romanesco cauliflower. This one takes 75 to 100 days, so I'm kind of pushing it because I only have 88, but it is frost tolerant. Like I said, I'm pretty confident that my actual first frost date is gonna be a lot longer. And then this purple of Sicily cauliflower. Again, like the purple broccoli, it's just super cool. I love colorful veggies. I'm excited to try this one out. I really also wanted to grow orange cauliflower and white cauliflower, but I don't have seeds for those. I'll probably run and get some seeds for those and start them maybe tomorrow or something. Um, but just like a regular white cauliflower. And then there's this orange cauliflower called cheddar cauliflower that I really need to find seeds for because I really wanna grow it. I think I'll do three each of these and it's just like planting the broccoli. Um, the seeds are really tiny, so covering them about a fourth of an inch or so. I grew this purple cauliflower in the spring and it was so beautiful. I chopped it up and put it in a chicken fried rice and it was just, it was stunning, I loved it. Next are my cabbages and cabbage-like greens and kale. Definitely going to be planting these Georgia Southern collards. I love collard greens. I was born and raised in the South. You're not a true Southerner if you don't like collard greens. <laughs> these collard greens take between 50 and 80 days, so that's perfect. Also going to grow this Napa cabbage. I'm really excited about that because I love making homemade kimchi and Napa cabbage is perfect for kimchi. And this only takes 50 to 55 days. So definitely, definitely gonna be growing this tatsoi again. I grew this last year. It lasted all throughout the winter for me. It was just totally unfazed by frost and even deep freezes. Extremely, extremely cold tolerant. So if you're in zone 7B and you want something that's gonna last all winter, definitely grow tatsoi. It's a very, very good flavor. It's kind of like bok choy, but I think it has a little bit more of a mustard flavor to it which I love mustard greens, so perfect for me. And this only takes 45 days. And of course, I also love growing bok choy. I love to put this in 
soups when I make um, pho or ramen or stir fries. Got my cabbages planted, similar to the broccoli. These are all brassicas. They all have the same size seeds, so they're all gonna be planted pretty much the same. About a fourth of an inch in depth. You just wanna kind of barely cover them with soil because their seeds are very tiny. Now I'm moving on to my kale, mustard greens, and radicchio. This is the radicchio that I want to plant. Um, it is a beautiful, like, mottled color, and I'm really excited. I've actually never tried growing radicchio before, and it's something new that I want to try. Mustard greens. I love mustard greens. I know that people either love or hate them because they have a very, very strong flavor. I'm somebody that loves the flavor. I love chewing on something that tastes just like mustard because I'm also obsessed with mustard. I love using these in wraps. Like, I'll make turkey wraps with them, and they're just, they're, mm. They're perfect. This is my favorite variety. I grew this last year. It gets huge and beautiful. It's a very, very large mustard green plant. And it's this beautiful purple color, although it's called red mustard. I don't know why that always happens in gardening. Everything that is purple is called red. I don't know why. As far as kale goes, I have four different varieties that I want to grow here. I love, love, love kale. I eat kale all winter, all spring. I wish I could grow it in the summer, but it's too hot here. So I'm really excited to be growing it again in the fall. Red Russian kale, this is my absolute favorite kale variety ever. It does extremely well for me in the winter. It always overwinters. It never has any pest problems. While the rest of my kale is getting aphids, this red Russian kale is not. I don't know what it is about red Russian kale, um, but it seems to be very aphid resistant. So that's Brilliant. Oh, I forgot to tell you the radicchio is 70 days, the mustard is 55 days, and this red Russian kale is 50 days. Another kale I love is this dinosaur kale. This is a classic. Everybody loves dinosaur kale. And this takes, it says 21 to 62 days, and it just says that because you can harvest this as like a baby green baby kale um, at 21 days if you want, or you can wait until it gets bigger and more mature. This is a new one, never grown it before, but it looks beautiful. It's called Dazzling Blue Kale. It kind of looks like the dinosaur kale, but a little bit bluer in, in its color. This one says 30 to 60 days. And this is your typical curly kale. Always love to have it. It's really delicious. I love this one the most for kale chips just because I like the texture. This one takes 53 to 65 days. These are also similar to the broccoli and cabbages. We're gonna plant about a fourth of an inch in depth, a couple of seeds per cell. The reason I plant more than one seed per cell is just for germination, just in case um, you know one of them doesn't germinate, then you kind of have like a backup plan. I usually do two seeds per cell. Some people do three. It doesn't matter. You eventually will have to thin them down to one plant per cell, whether you just chop off the extra seedling or you separate them. I personally don't really like disturbing the roots to separate them. I just kind of cut off the other seedlings. So really, it's just your personal preference. This is another one that I might be a little too late for, but I'm still gonna give it a try, and that's sunflowers. I love sunflowers so much, and a lot of the sunflowers that I planted, I don't know if you can see these back here, but they came, they were beautiful, they bloomed, and now they're like that. I feel like sunflowers are just such a fall aesthetic and I very much love the fall aesthetic so I really want more sunflowers but I definitely should have planted these like a couple of weeks ago would have been ideal. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna get any blooms but I'm gonna try. Usually sunflowers take between 90 and 120 days so yeah like I said I'm pushing it but we're gonna try. First I have these chocolate cherry sunflowers that one of my followers sent me. Thank you so much if you're watching. I am going to plant them right now. Then I've got these lemon queen, which I think are really beautiful. And there's this vanilla ice. I don't know why, but I just, I love like pastel colored sunflowers. And this is a really beautiful pale yellow color. Then we have this gorgeous, gorgeous drop dead red. I have grown these before. I love them. They are beautiful. I have this crazy idea and I really just want to cover my entire yard with sunflowers. Um, so I think I'm going to plant the rest of these cells with, with sunflowers. If you're in a higher growing zone, which is usually south of me, 
You have plenty of time to plant more sunflowers. Sunflowers, the seeds are a bit bigger depending on the variety, so we're gonna give them about a half an inch in depth. So I'm gonna do an entire six cell of this drop dead red. I'm not gonna be planting these in my garden beds. I'm gonna be planting these in ground. Along the back side of my fence, you can't see it, but along the back side of my fence where the chicken coop is gonna be, I really want to plant some sunflowers all along the fence. Like I want a whole fence line of sunflowers. I did that my first year gardening and I don't know why I never did it again. Why did I not do it my second year and this year? I have no idea, but I did it my first year and it was so gorgeous. It was beautiful and I'm really missing it. So I'm like, I want that again. The sunflowers didn't do super hot because along the back side of my fence, it doesn't get the most sun but it gets just enough for them to bloom, but you know, their blooms aren't huge or anything. Um, but that's why I like planting the ones that have multiple blooms. So they kind of like spread out. Those are my favorite sunflowers. I don't really like planting the ones that are just one flower. I feel like it's kind of like too much work, you know, for just one flower, like, come on. After I finish planting all these sunflowers, I'm gonna show you how I direct sow the rest of the things in my garden and some things I've already I've already direct sowed so I'll just kind of show you they're actually starting to sprout so I'll show you their sprouts okay that is it I got the whole tray full soil is damp enough because I pre-wet it um, so it doesn't need any more watering but when I do go to water it next I will be putting it in this tray so I'll be bottom watering not watering from the top because that can cause a lot of algae buildup. That is it for everything that I'm starting from seed in the trays. Everything else is going to be direct sowed right into my garden because there are some things that I like to start in trays but then there's some things that I prefer to direct sow. There's some people that start everything in trays and that's totally fine if that's what you want to do. There's also people that only direct sow, also fine if that's what works for you. But I find that like my brassicas, like my broccoli, cauliflower, the things that we planted here today, they do better started from seed in trays. And then I find that the things I'm about to show you do better just directly planted in the ground. And I actually really like to plant them chaotically, what I like to call my chaos method, where I'm just throwing these seeds around in the ground, I throw them in bare spots and then I just kind of like, you know, rustle up the soil a little bit and then water them in, keep them moist until they start to sprout. And then I'll have to go and thin them out. So I'm going to show you what I'm gonna be planting using that method. The first thing I'll be direct sowing is lettuce. And I like to do the chaos method with lettuce where I just take the seeds and I gently sprinkle them around the area I'm gonna be planting rustle up the soil, keep the soil moist. A lot of these things, the seeds are so tiny that they barely, barely need to be covered with soil. So that's kind of why this chaos planting method works. And with lettuce, I kind of like to just mix and match the lettuce. So I'll just kind of throw a bunch of different seeds in my hand and sprinkle them around. And one of those varieties is this red sales lettuce, very beautiful lettuce. This takes 45 days. Then we've got this little gem lettuce. This is more of a heading type of lettuce where the red sails is a leafy type. And that just means that it kind of forms more of like a head, kind of like cabbage. And this one takes 68 days. I love when a seed company puts together really great lettuce mixes. Cause like I said, I like to mix and match mine. So I got the chef's medley from Botanical Interests, which by the way, you've probably noticed that I show a lot of Botanical Interests. It's one of my favorite seed companies. I love it so much. And it looks like it has a bunch of different colors and textures in this mix. And I'm really excited to plant this. And it says it takes anywhere between 21 to 45 days because of the different varieties in there. Then we're gonna move on to spinach. I really like this Bloomsdale long-standing spinach. This is kind of just like your typical leafier type of spinach. And this takes 28 to 45 days. Next up, we've got beets. I've got three different varieties that I'm gonna grow this year. We've got Golden Boy. This takes 65 to 70 days. This is supposed to be a much lighter beet. It's supposed to be a sweeter tasting beet, not have as much of that earthy flavor as the red beets do. But I also really like my red beets, so I'm also planting this Early Wonder. And this one is ready in as little as 48 days, and that's that's pretty quick. Then we've got Chiogia. I think I said that right, Chio, Chiogia? maybe Chiogia, I don't know, Chiogia. Um, this one is 55 days. This one's super beautiful. It's got, it's like a red and white 
rings, which I think is really, really cool. Um, I can't wait to cut into this one and be like, wow, that's so beautiful. So for the beets, I like to plant them the same way. I love just tossing the seeds around, being very chaotic with it, um, just running them through the soil. I think the best beets I ever grew were planting them this way. You just wanna make sure that when they're popping up, you wanna thin them down to be about three to four inches apart. Next up is carrots. I have two varieties here, although I've kind of already planted some already. Shin Kuroda, this is one of my favorite, favorite varieties. It's kind of like an old reliable for me. It's just your standard orange carrot. They're very tasty, they're super sweet. They're really great at plowing through dense soil. So if you live in North Carolina, we have that crazy clay North Carolina soil. This variety is supposed to be really good for that. Although you can't just plant it right in clay soil. That's not gonna work. But if you have soil that you've kind of tried to amend and it's still kind of on the denser side, then this variety will be great for that. And these take about 75 days. Then we've got Cosmic Purple. These take 70 days and these are clearly gorgeous. They're beautiful, beautiful purple. When you cut into them, it's like they're purple on the outside, but then they're orange on the inside, which is really pretty. And then I actually have a Kyoto Red Carrot over there in that um, garden bed that I let flower this year. And so it's going to seed right now. The flower already bloomed, it got pollinated, and it's forming these seeds. I have like a billion seeds on that thing, and I've been coming out here every day and just kind of pinching off some seeds and sprinkling them around the garden. Um, so hoping that they will pop up soon. Also planted some Danvers 126 in this bed back behind me. Um, I planted that for the epic gardening video that I was featured in. Planted some of those in a nice neat row just to demonstrate how you can also plant carrots. You can plant all of these actually in nice neat rows if you want, that's totally fine. We've got radishes. I really love this French breakfast radish. These are ready from seed to harvest in as little as 28 days. They're like one of the only things in the garden that can give you that near instant gratification. They just grow so quickly. Definitely gonna be planting some French breakfast and I also planted some daikon already in the garden. Those take a little bit longer. I think if I remember correctly, it was like 65 plus days. And last but not least, I think this is the last thing. I hope I'm not forgetting anything. Last but not least, peas. I've got a few different varieties. Some I've already planted. I've already planted some sugar daddy snap peas. And I've also got this sugar magnolia. This is a purple variety. Very beautiful. I grow this every year. I grew a lot of these in the spring. These are 70 days. New one that I want to grow this year are these green arrow shelling peas. I've never grown shelling peas and these take 65 days. So for the peas, I do not chaos plant peas. I plant them about two inches apart, about an inch in depth and they are very vigorous vining plants, so they do need proper trellising. You can grow them up a tomato cage. You can make like a makeshift pea um, kind of arch thing. If you have cattle panel trellises, you can grow them up that, which is what I will be planting mine up. Okay guys, that is it. I have just planted my entire fall garden. I feel really good about it. I have been meaning to do this, and so I feel like a little bit of a weight has been lifted off my chest. I know I still haven't planted these into the garden yet, but at least I got them started. That's what I was like putting off for a long time. I was definitely procrastinating this, because if I'm being honest with you, starting seeds is definitely not my favorite thing to do. It's not. So I will let these come up, and I probably will not be up potting these like I typically would in like the spring with tomatoes and peppers and things like that. Once they sprout and they are ready to um, get out of these six cells, they will be going straight into the garden. So when the time comes for that, I'll also be making a video for that as well. Definitely follow me on TikTok and Instagram because I like to share a lot in my Instagram stories about the progress of everything. And if you like this video, don't forget to give me a like and subscribe. I hope everyone has an amazing week. I hope that if you're able to, you get out in your garden and start your fall garden. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.